right guys, good morning. We're gonna get stoked today. We haven't done a tip tutorial in a while and I surfed Nosara two days in a row. I didn't really wanna do the same thing, the same video, so I'm gonna drop 10 of my best tips today with you guys of how to paddle out better when you're a beginner and you have a foam board or a long board or a big board and you're at a beach break and it's breaking all over the place and you see people paddling out and you don't understand how. You've been trying to paddle for five, 10 minutes, you end up washed up on the shore, you're exhausted, you don't know what's going on. There are some tips that I've learned over the years that I should be able to help you guys out with and drop some comments too if you guys think anything else that I don't cover in this video. This is a community, we're trying to help each other get better at stuff and one of the most main things is getting out to the breaks that you can actually enjoy surfing. So we're gonna jump into this right now with how sets work. A lot of people want to lollygag on the inside and just wait around in waist deep water while the current's pulling them back and forth and you can't really see over the waves. Take a step back on the beach, collect yourself, Get your breath dialed in, maybe drop a knee and just think of a couple things you're grateful for as you wait for the set to roll in. Once the set rolls in, don't wait until it's completely gone because then you're gonna have a little bit of time in between when the next set comes. The main rule of thumb for paddling out is you wanna be able to cover more ground in between the waves that break than the waves are gonna take that distance away from you. So once you see one or two waves left in the set, get on your board as quickly as you can Paddle at a rate that's kind of like you're gonna be paddling forever. Don't just use all your power. You need to save your energy. And beach breaks kind of break in three sections. There's that little inside reform, there's the middle part that can get kind of dumpy, and then there's the wicked far outside break that we wanna to try to get out to. When you see the set only has one or two waves left in it, get on your board, get paddling, and try to just stiff arm your board with as much speed, making sure that your nose gets over that little foam section, and you should be able to just pop right over it. Keep that momentum going, and this is when technique comes in. It obviously is gonna take reading waves and knowing how they're gonna break and which direction they're going, but you don't need to paddle straight towards the peak and just get smoked all the time. If you change the direction of your paddle in kind of a zigzag format, depending on where the shoulder of the wave is, you can sometimes make it around the wave and not even get broken on, and that will save so much of your endurance. A massive thing to keep in mind when you're doing that, though, is if you don't make it all the way, before the wave hits you, you have to make sure your nose is pointing straight out again or else it's gonna clip your board at an angle, it's gonna pick it up, it's gonna throw it, and then you're gonna be on the inside. And this is gonna happen. And when that does happen, the main thing is, first of all, stay submerged a little bit longer because remember, your board is gonna be flying through the air, your fins are gonna be trying to smash you in the head. And what I do is I reach down, I find my ankle leash, I pull it taut until I can find my tail. And then once I come up, my tail is already set up so that I can push my tail towards my stomach pivot the board 180 at a straight up and down angle, get on it and get paddling as soon as possible. And that's the most important thing is getting on your board as soon as possible so you can make more ground than the wave is gonna remove from you. So hopefully you're back on your board, you're heading towards that middle section now, which is pretty gnarly. And this is when there's three different choices basically of ways that you can get through the wave. The first is obviously the duck dive, which is very difficult on a big board, but if you use all your power and you stand up on your board, you push it down with your arms, and you pivot it with your tail so that your nose points back up once you go through the wave and it shoots you out. There's obviously other videos that we can go more in depth on in the future maybe of how to duck dive, but that's one of them. The second way is usually the go-to, which is the turtle roll, which I don't really enjoy it, but when you're paddling with all of these, it's best to have the most momentum that you can. Flip over right before the wave hits you, making sure that the wave isn't hitting you, but just enough time so that before the wave hits you, you flip over, and then as the wave hits you, you hold on to your board and you use your core to flip 180 and land back on your stomach and hopefully paddle over it. Kind of a fairy tale, but sometimes it works. And then there's a more advanced one that I've actually never seen anybody but me do, might have invented it, and that is paddling with as much power as you can, sinking all your weight onto your tail, pulling your board down into the water, and then rocket launching it up, making sure that the nose gets over the foam, and it does kind of a foam climb up to the other side. I'm under the water, I find my tail. If my leash is loose, then I know it made it over it, and it's just waiting for me on the other side. Climb up, grab it, get on my board, and paddle as much as I can. Hopefully now we're approaching that outside set. We're looking for the shoulder. We're trying to make sure that we can get around it. If we can't, we do one more of the rolls or the duck dives or the board throw, whatever we can. But if you're not an experienced surfer, I have to say, before you go throwing your board away from you, one of the biggest things that you need to learn is respect for people around you and the danger of your board. And if you're throwing your board or you're ditching your board, you always have to look to make sure that there's no people around you because safety is number one and people hate when boards are flying at their head. 
which makes sense. And also, your board is your flotation device. And if your board goes flying and you break your leash, you're going to be in a whole situation. But you're also going to have to, no matter what, find your leash, find your board, flip it over, get back on it. So at least if you keep your board with you and you're getting thrown around, when you come up, it's going to float you to the top as quick as possible. You can get on your board and you can start paddling. So now is when you want to actually use that power that you've been reserving because you've kind of just been paddling at a monotone rate. When you see that outside set, sometimes if you can read the wave, you'll know that you can make it. And that's when you're going to want to put your head down, get into gear and paddle as hard as you can to make it over that last set or to try to make it around the corner of that last set. And when you do that, here's the thing that you don't want to be. You don't want to be that guy that almost made it out to the lineup, sees a little wave, gets all antsy, tries to paddle for it, and then ends up not getting it because it's not a set wave. You're too far on the inside, you turn around and you're dreading your decision. Now you're starting from scratch, trying to make it back over that set. It's probably gonna be a five wave set and you're gonna end up back in the middle and you're gonna have no energy. So huge tip, just wait for it, get out there, get to where the lineup is, reserve your energy, recollect, reconnect, watch some other people, give all of them priority because they were out there first. You never want to be that guy that paddles out, sits there, we all wait for a set, and then you just start paddling for it. There is etiquette in the lineup. Maybe I should make an etiquette video one day, and now that you're out there, you're trying to catch a wave, and hopefully if you catch a good wave from the outside, if you don't let it throw you to the inside, you should be able to kick out early, paddle, maybe to the shoulder to make it around one or just do one duck dive or one turtle roll or whatever, but you should be able to kick out and make it back over that set and now you're circling that outside section. It's only when you literally want to surf all the way to the inside and you have all these tips that I shared with you dialed that you'll be able to go to the beach and then paddle back out again. And it's just an endurance thing and over time you'll get better at paddling, you'll get better at doing the duck dives, you'll get better at reading the waves so you know where to go. But I hope this video helped you guys because paddling out is super gnarly and sharing some tips and advice with you guys is always an honor. Super grateful to help you guys out. Remember we have the Discord, we have a comment section, drop a thumbs up on this video and share it with a friend if it helped you or if you know it's going to help somebody else. Here's a montage of that day that we just explained. Hope you guys are stoking and we'll see you afterwards.
Next week, we're going to come up and do the, uh, the boat. The don't boat. work too hard, bro. We're going to do the boat. Don't work too hard. <laughs> Stay busy. Shit, you know my phone's going to ring every eight minutes. <laughs> I know, it's just every me and you minutes. working the whole time, every bro. Every eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, I'll meet up with you guys again before you yeah, leave we'll here. Sounds good, brother. Have fun. Give me the... Woo! All right. Peace out. Tengo un pequeño problema. No sé si alguien le dijo, no está funcionando el aire acondicionado atrás, tengo problemas. Está bien. Veo que ahora regreso, voy a llevarlo al taller a revisarlo y ponerlo bien. ¿Qué te pasa? Uh, no AC, boys. Good. Good. I got my own AC. Two bucks. What's up? We're back. Oh, man. How are you doing, my We're friend? We're good. We can go like a fans of your channel. They stay here because of the video. <laughs> Don't worry, I got y'all checked in. Oh, you're sitting poolside. Here's your here's your room key. <laughs> Anything else we can help you with, Nisa Hollywood? Yeah. You're good. Let's take good, a little dip in the pool. Yeah, bro. Yeah, like it, dude. Tell me what you just told me, dog. This guy's the reason I'm here. I mean, I want to learn how to surf. Saw his videos, and I'm here. Coming so from Atlanta. Coming from Georgia. Yeah. That's so yeah, sick, sure. dude. We gotta get in the water. We gotta get a session here, bro. Yeah. I was just out there. How was it? I got pounded today. <laughs> <laughs> Today's your day, yeah, bro. Yeah, we gotta get me so in the water. Yeah, we got a little contest going. Dude, that's what the people want to see. No joke. Yeah. Yeah, you wanna grab these? Here, I'll take care. I got I got you. Come on. Let, we gotta let, let me Hollywood rest. Come on. Yeah, I'll take this. Here, yeah, let me take that. A little bit of water? You wanna open it up for you? You wanna do the honors? 
How does it feel to be us, back? Beyond us? Beyond us, dude? Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see who's in charge here. Uh, Woo! Mike Green or <laughs> In the land of the dreams. Oh. It's all over, bro. I might need your help, bro. You know how to use one of these things? You use the cream? Let's go on this thing or just come off? Is it a one and done or is it a multiple? This is just the thing everybody does? It's bad. All I can think about right now is Tom Mallet. The little, like, how do you? I see a whole section and nothing happens. Now I'm a big beard guy. You're gonna tell him I look at it. He's a lot of a beard. Has anybody got seriously injured? One of the only people who's never done this? And then you're back in the game. This is crazy. 31 years old, just shaved for the first time in my life. I think I did a pretty good job. I also feel like it's burning. Don't you need something afterwards, Niso? He's gone. All right, guys, we gotta shut this video down right now. We are back in the land of the dreams here at Onda, Playa Grande. And if you saw last month, we stayed here. It was Mike Green approved. He needed a nice zone away from the sleeping in board bag situation and the crazy mosquitoes. And when we showed up, it was the dream for me because to have good Wi-Fi and like a solid desk and just a place where not only can you get your work done, but if you need a break to get off the computer, it's a two minute walk to the beach to surf world-class waves. And if you're not even trying to surf or if you want to surf, they have surf lessons, but they also do like ATV tours, guided hikes to waterfalls and these crazy mountains. They have trips to Witch's Rock and it really is the dream. But for me right now, I'm gonna be just grinding on my computer trying to catch up for the next couple days and this place is the dream for that so if you guys are enjoying these videos and you ever plan to come to costa rica or even not just do us a favor go to instagram show them some love at owned a playa grande and that just means the world to me because when we can help them out and they can help us out it makes this whole community thing that much better so i appreciate you guys hope you enjoyed this video i hope that someday you come and stay at Onda Playa Grande and you experience this dream, but we're gonna be here for the next couple days. So thank you guys so much for having us. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video for the dream. Woo!